Hey guys, so today we are going to build a dirty video mixer. Once you turn the potentiometer, then you get some distortion on your clip and you can mix two videos together. So now I have two DVDs playing. So what you see is that it adds a lot of glitch and it's very easy to use because it's a passive tool. So there's no power in it. You just pass your video through it and it goes out to play in a TV or any screen. You can make it super clear or super distorted. This dirty video mixer features two toggle switches, which allows you to turn on or off a video input on each side. It has a knob with a potentiometer of 1K that mixes both input, unless you decide to put one off then it will simply add distortion to the input selected. You'll see it's very easy to operate and build. This design was originally created by a Dutch artist named Carl Klump. He built a bunch of other machines as well, and you can see his creation on his website, karlklump.nl. A few people have attempted to tweak his dirty video mixer design and give it more features, but what's nice about Carl Klump's design is that it's so simple and it's very easy to get cool results instantly. I'm using this Akko soldering station, and it's the FX888D. And so far, I really love it because it eats up in seconds and it's easy to set your own temperature. So I'm just going to show you how fast it goes. So I set it to, I think, 660. So you see it's heating up super quick. And in seconds, your soldering iron is going to be ready. And be very careful when you use a soldering iron because you never want to touch any of the metal part and you want to leave it in the holder when you're not using it. So the grip itself is like always going to remain cold. And you want to get a fine tip like this to work on small pieces when working with circuit bending and circuit building. I'm using the T18 D16 Shape 1.6D by Arco. Basically it's like a small tip but it's flat at the, at the end and the flat part really allows you to put a little bit of solder on and it's easy to solder small parts with it. Uh, this part here you have to wet it so just make sure it's like, like damp but not like soaking wet because you're gonna use it to clean your tip and like it has to have a little bit of water. This part you don't put water, it's like a little bit of foil. It comes, all that comes with the, the soldering iron and I'm not sponsored by them. I'm just like really loving it so far, so it's cool. I'm just going to show you how it works. You're gonna have three video connectors and I'm going to show you what it looks like. I have this model here. Okay, so basically it looks like that. Those ones are usually usually for um, PCB boards. So you usually put it on board so there's no part to screw it or like to put the nut on. So they are not like the best one for what I'm doing. I ordered the other models too, but I couldn't get it on time. So I'm just going to practice with these ones. If you're ever going to buy stuff just to practice soldering, I would suggest you buy it from eBay or like other cheap shops. It takes a long time to arrive, like about <laughs> like almost three months, but at least you pay just a fraction of the price. Uh, this is another dirty mixer. So you have your two switches and you have the knob in the middle, which is a potentiometer of 1K. And we're going to build the same thing today. And what makes the difference is that this is a very nice aluminum ammon enclosure and you can get project enclosure cases from eBay as well and on Amazon, but again, eBay is way cheaper. So if you want to get a nice case like that, it looks like a million times better than <laughs> just recycling old like, the medical container from your husband. <laughs> so I would suggest that either you find nice cases that are durable uh, if you intend to resell it, or you get some really cool shapes. So I just got a uh, used nest gun from a Quebec seller on eBay. But basically you can just put your design on anything, like as long as you can pierce it and it's not going to break, then you're good. And like it doesn't look super good inside. So it's nicer if you have a bigger box so you can really tape it or glue it or like use some zip ties to make it all clean inside so it's not going to move anywhere. And I just wanted to show you those 
nuts that I were I was talking about. So basically these are like the best model you can get for these types of projects because you can safely secure it in place with those nuts. So it's not going to move compared to these ones where you're supposed to like put it on the, the board and like there's no nuts and you there's no thread too so you can't screw it. <laughs> Sorry if I talk a lot, I just want to make sure that I cover everything. We're going to need three sockets like this. For the first model, we're going to need two toggle switches. And toggle switches are those two things. So it's like on one side and if you go on the other side that it could power something else. But if you don't put anything on the other side, then it does on off. These are super inexpensive and I recommend you get a bunch because if you get into circuit bending, you're going to use like 10, 15, 20 per project. So we're going to have video one, then we're going to have video two and our out, which is video three. All right. Then we're going to want to add a ground to it. And on each of these guys, there's like a little curvy thing that will be our ground and the other one will be our line to hook it to the other components. So we're going to add a ground first and then we're going to need a potentiometer and that's what's going to add the glitch to our, to our system. So I have here a bunch of different uh, intensity linear potentiometer. Uh, this one is a fave K. For this one, everyone seems to be using a 1K pot. And it's always written on top of it what it is. So it's easy to know like which intensity your linear potentiometer is. And you'll see that there's three legs to the potentium potentiometer. Uh, and we're going to use those three legs for this. The second one will be our out put our butt here and that's three legs then we need two toggle switches okay so don't worry if there are six legs we're only going to use three of them so we're gonna need two like that and like any type of these will work because they don't have any resistance to it so you can just pick whichever you want and there are some high quality ones. On eBay, I only found the cheap ones, but they work really well. So like whatever. Uh, I also really, really love to, lo to work with a flux pen. And flux pen are like super amazing because they make your soldering so much nicer and smooth. So if you can get some flux either in a pen or uh, like in those little cases, then you will have like such an easier job and you'll really be happy after. Then you'll need some cables. You can also recycle cable if you don't have this type of wires. So yeah, cables like that, you can open it to say, like, get some wire cutters like that. This one is from, again, Akko. I think they, they cut like in butter, it's really, really good quality. And apparently someone told me that inside of these, there's like a bunch of different colors and you can get all of these inside and it's like way cheaper. There's going to be a toggle switch, another toggle switch, and they have three legs. Video one will go in this leg, but it will also go in this leg, put those two wires on one, and then you have the ground on the other one. And the other one here, V2 will go here and also here. It's pretty much the opposite. And then this guy goes here and this guy goes here. I hope it makes sense. <laughs> oh, obviously you're going to need some solder. <laughs> it's not gonna go well without that. So I got this 0.8 millimeter diameter solder with flux in it. So remember when I was telling you that having a flux pen was really helping? Well, this one already has some flux in it. So it makes it like double easier to just 
like make nice joints and depending on the project you're doing you kind of want to know like how long of a wire you need because it depends on the case so for this one i place like this much of wires in between so i could have a little bit of play for wherever i was going to put it and uh, for those of you who are like like strongly judging me right now because they think that this is cannabis uh, this is just cbd there's no thc in it and my husband is like super injured and this is prescribed by a doctor and the case i took this one because they come in another bottle inside so it was like perfectly clean and empty so that's why i, I reused it so no judging okay so this guy has a curvy part and a straight part and we're going to be putting our ground on the curvy top part here so this one here and this is going to be for our other cable um, since I'm not going to be using my fancy enclosure for now I guess I'm just going to create the design to show you how to do it so I'm not going to actually put it in the enclosure um, so I'm, I'm just going to gauge if ever I need to put it in a box so we're going to use, I like to use black for the ground because I don't know in movies, I guess, the ground is black. I keep thinking I'm building bombs. I feel like a bad person. So I'm just going to make two like that and try to make them relatively the same length. We're going to need to strip the ends. Um, I'm using this wire cutter and since it's like a super tiny one, you kind of have to just use the water wire cutter part here. Kind of gently press on the end. And once it's pressed, you can remove it. So that way it gives you this. And then what you want to do is like kind of twist it. So I'm going to do the same thing for like every end of my cable. So this is about the size I used last time for the other construction. So we're going to put it where it's very flat. Uh, you need to have a lot of airflow going through because it's not good for your health to like breathe the solder. So when there's fume, just don't breathe in and put a fan if you have a fan. I have a huge patio door next to me, so it's all open. Uh, what I like to do is that I like to add sol uh, the flux directly on the components first and you have to kind of press it so that the flux will go at the end of the pen and then while I'm doing that I'm just going to put it back in the soldering I'm just going to apply some of the flux directly on there on the tree component and I'll do all the pieces at the same time so that it will already be pre-flux for later so for this one, we're only going to use one side. I'm just going to keep the side that I fluxed up. Okay, and this we're going to use. It doesn't really show that much, the flux, but you see that as long as there's some on every, on every little metal string there, then it's going to be very smooth. Cool. Now that this is done, I'm going to put a little bit of my solder on my soldering iron and I'll pre-coat it like that. I don't know if I need to tell you that, but like don't touch the joints because <laughs> it won't be fun. Okay, and then you need to clean it. So to clean it, you can just either use the damp section and then put it in the metal little sponge thing and now you can put it back in the holder okay so now we're going to hook our ground these two guys are going to be soldered together and then they're going to be soldered on top here so i'm going to add some solder once more and oh i guess i should yeah I should twist them, I guess. I'm definitely not a professional. <laughs> so yeah, I guess we could twist those two together. So it will be easier to solder them to the middle. 
Whenever you can make them stronger, just say, do it. <laughs> So you kind of want to like warm the part first and then put your thing and now uh, the last one show you what we've done so far we hooked up the ground here and here that's what we've done pretty impressive huh? good job guys so now we have those two switches and this one k pot guy uh, for the colors, I guess I'm gonna do one color per side so that it's easier to see what we're doing. So a short one that will go towards there. And a longer one that will hook up till here. And then there's also one that will go from this middle to this side. So yeah, you want to have three cables per side. So what we're doing now is this one, this one, and this little guy here. Same thing, we're going to use our wire cutter part, cut the end, and you can leave your soldering iron open. Like there's, as long as it's in, it's older, it's fine. Just always keep an eye on it if you have animals and kids or if you're clumsy. And whenever you're done with everything, just like make sure you close everything. Slightly pressing with the wire cutter. I don't press too much obviously because I don't want to cut the wire. I just want to cut the little silicone-ish part that's around it. And you don't want to remove too much, like not more than one centimeter. Okay, then I'm going to just Turn my strings like that at the end, make it nice. Okay. Same thing here. Twist all my strings. We have two that start from the same location, so I'm going to twist them together as well. And then I'm going to pre-code them. So the longer part will go here. Okay, so I'm going to coat it and I still have like a little piece of solder from the other day so I'm just going to use this one first but since oops <laughs> but since it's small I don't want to touch it with my hands. Okay and I'm going to prep it. I'm gonna do this guy first here. I think I'm gonna put it on the side, it will be easier to solder it. Yeah, this seems okay. Because you don't wanna put too much solder on it. Then this guy goes here. For this part, you can put it inside. And I'm just going to fold it. I'll show you. Yeah, something like that. You can even curve it more so that you can put it inside the hole. Okay. And then if you can twist it, just like twist it gently. So then now it's, it has already a better connection. I'm going to put the next one already. Okay. The second one will go in this middle one here. Okay. Just twist it like that. They're already stronger than they were. So I'm going to start with those guys. I'm just going to warm it up a little bit. And you try to fill the hole with the solder. Like you don't want to put too much, but you don't want to put not enough that the hole is not covered by the solder. It will still work, but it just makes it more stable if you cover the hole with it. Just a little bit of solder. 
it's way easier when you can just hook it to something. I don't know if you can see, but the hole is all covered and it doesn't look like it's going to go anywhere. Now we've done this guy and this one. So we have to hook this guy to the left side of the pot. Sir. Just warm it up a little bit. We need to add a wire that goes there, there and to the other side of the pot. So I'm going to pick another color, about the same size I did with the other side. Okay, so I'm just twisting the end of my wires, make sure every strand is like not loose and all nice. Okay, going to do this one first. So what I do is like, I, I think it works fine when you start here and then if you have some extra solder on your tip, you can just go and brush over the wires that you already put solder on. So I, I feel like it works nice when you do that. So I learned all of that on YouTube. Um, I also read a bunch of books. There's this cool dude, uh, I think his name is like Reed Gazila. I think his book is called Circuit Bending make your own alien instruments and it was like so fun to read those two guys and then i'm gonna solder this one together so i intend to circuit bend a bunch of stuff during summer because i have vacations since i'm a teacher so i got a bunch of old uh, video processors and like uh, video equalizer videotape title makers and I'm going to bend them and see what type of video effects we can make with that. This guy is supposed to go from the second one to the one on the right. Alright. This guy it's gonna go here. Looking good. We've done this and this one and this one. So we only have one left to do. It's the middle one that brings our potentiometer to the video output. So for this one, I guess I'm going to take a more flashy color. Now we're going to coat it, like just pre-coat. Give it a nice little coat. Careful not to touch the other side. start by doing this side that's done now this guy goes to the middle So here you go, you have it. That's what it should look like without the box. This is what your joints should like, relatively look like. Like not too much solder and like, it's pretty clean. 
powering my TV. And you're gonna need like video cable like that. You can get them for, for free sometimes. I'm going to put it in my video input from my TV. And oh, it, just a tip, if you're ever going to use a combo like that, uh, I would say don't, because like usually the cassette combo kind of suck. The other side of our television for the output will go in the middle where the green cable goes. So I'm just going to hook it in like that. Like usually it's cuter in the box and like all nice, but I'm just testing to see if it works. All right, just give me a sec. I'm going to get my, okay, so I have my two DVD player here and those are the cables from the outputs of both DVD players. Now whatever is playing and one of them will play here. Oh, and already you see it, it was Night at the Roxbury. Best movie ever. The other one should appear here. I'm going to, I'm just going to add a, a cover for my potentiometer because it's hard to turn otherwise. Oh yeah, I have some nice uh, like caps like that. You can, you can find like a bunch of different ones. I think it's like six millimeters, so like just pick whichever work. I'm just going to add that on top. It will be easier for me to turn it now. So now it does what it's supposed to do. Just switch from one to the other source and it adds some glitches. it's like fairly easy I'm just turning it and whenever I turn like there's more effects that appear and it mixes both clips together so now you see that guy from Night at the Roxbury will for all mix it with the like animation guy from another movie that way you can layer stuff together and just add more glitch So that's how you build the first model. And in the next episode, I'm going to show you how to build the one for the nest gun. Now, if you want to use your own enclosure, the only thing you have to do is basically make some holes with drill and some drill bits. And if you want to secure everything, I suggest you put some hot glue on every joint. So you make sure that everything is covered by hot glue so it won't move at all. So thank you very much for watching the first part of this series. Next part, I'm going to show you how to make your own dirty video mixer inside a NES gun. And I will use this other template with push buttons. So see you around. Have a nice one.